Yes, so. it is. Excellent. Okay, second day uh, today uh, we are at the main venue of uh, Ars Electronica this year at the Center for Sex and Culture. A wonderful new space. Uh, it was a church. It also was a brothel. It was a gambling space. Now it's a space for sex and discourse. Perfect. A big applause for the Center for Sex and Culture. Right, and um, the second day is the day for discursive and performative approaches. And we would like to start with uh, our uh, friends. Ned Mayhem and Maggie Mayhem, the PSI Gasm Project, and uh, it's wonderful to have you here. We just have to get you some decent VGA and negativity, so you can actually start your PowerPoint presentation. Much appreciated. Yeah, it should show up soon. What's All that? Right. Oh, oh yeah, that's my background. And oh, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, excellent. Woo! A big applause for the PSI Gas Project, the Mayhems! Hey. I think that should be, should be on. Hello? Okay. Hi everybody. Welcome. I have to turn off that stuff. <laughs> well, welcome to Ars Electronica 2011. Yay! Yay. Yay. I'm Ned Mayhem, and I'm going to talk to you all about the PSI Gasm Project. So it all started about 18 months ago, when I had the pleasure of being seduced by this absolutely amazing woman, who was just brilliantly intelligent, drop-dead gorgeous, a sexual visionary. The sex was absolutely unbelievable. So, I mean, this one Sunday afternoon, um, I take her over to my apartment, and, you know, we, it was a lazy Sunday, we ordered in, and we were just kind of spend the whole day in bed. That was the plan. Um, so, in one of those necessary intercoital interludes, we got to talking, as you do, and she started telling me about her work. And she worked a ton with HIV. She went to Tanzania to fight HIV. She was doing um, test counseling up and down California. She was working with HIV-positive homeless youth in San Francisco. She also told me about her work as a fetish model and as a porn performer and as a volunteer for the San Francisco Sex Information Hotline. And she told me about her activism, fighting for the rights of sex workers and other people who are marginalized for their sexual identities and sexual behaviors. And throughout all these stories, there was a common thread. In everything she said, she was immensely frustrated with how much ignorance there is in the world about sex and sexuality. And, I mean, both was their individual ignorance in which Many individuals and classes of individuals were denied access to accurate sex information. And also, as a society, we didn't put enough emphasis, we don't make sex information a priority to acquire and to disseminate this information to the public. And I was frustrated at these things too, of course, but in a more basic way, I just didn't want haters to judge me for being a pervert. But Maggie had seen how these problems actually cause real suffering in the world. And, you know, but this was getting a bit heavy, so I changed the subject, and, you know, one thing led to another on this lazy Sunday afternoon. And, you know, things got a bit fuzzy, but when the world came back into focus for me, I see Maggie sitting there above me with this look on her face of just familiar wonder, you know, like a, like a pianist who just played an immensely difficult Rachmaninoff piece or something. And she looks at me and she pulls her fingers out of my asshole, <laughs> looks at her fingers, looks at me and just says, I wish I could show you how your ass feels around my fingers. I find this fascinating. There's so much information there about orgasms. I, they're so similar between men and women, even though people talk about a male and female orgasm. You can feel all those subtle twitches, but it's also so strong. You can learn all about how an orgasm works and how your anatomy of your body works through the inside of your asshole. I'm, of course, still fuck drunk. I'm like, asshole, yeah. <laughs> I like assholes. <laughs> Maggie was getting really intense about it, you know? And she was like, I, I know there's a way. I just, I want to create some device to, to record these things and measure them and put graphs up so I can show people all of this information about assholes. To show all the people who don't think that an asshole is a sex organ or who think that 
female orgasms are some nebulous evolutionary accident that have nothing to do with male orgasms. I want to show people this data. I just need a way to get the data. And of course, that got my attention, you know? Because I'm a <laughs> physics grad student, so I'm like, what sex, yeah. Oh, wait, you need to capture data? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically from there, the PSI Gasm project was conceived, and that was the basis of many long discussions over the course of the next year in which we fleshed out that seed of an idea into a vision for where this project was going to go. So what we wanted to do with our vision for this open source citizen science sex project was to create physiological measurement devices that would measure things that your body does as a result of your arousal and your orgasm. I wanted to bring my skills and experience from the quantum nanoelectronics laboratory to build the actual devices and use my engineering know-how to make them spectacular. And I would draw on Maggie's encyclopedic knowledge of the human sexual response to guide our research towards the most interesting and relevant topics. And she could help me interpret the results in the best possible light to be a help to people, um, both in legislation and in their personal lives and in public policy. And we also wanted to make all of the information about this project public, from our designs to our results, because we want people to learn from the data we gather. We also want to inspire all the people to start studying their own bodies. We want to help them get the tools and knowledge necessary to do this in the most productive possible way for them. So that means we want to make as much education as possible to help other people start doing the same things that we're doing on any scale that they want to, to start taking the data about the sex that's relevant to their lives. So we created the first device in January of this year, and through a lot of late nights and a lot of coffee and cigarettes, um, we're now in the third generation of the PSI Gasm devices, and our vision is closer than ever to becoming something real. So in this presentation, I'm first going to talk to you about why I believe that quality sex science research is important, both to our individual sex lives and to the legislation that we put in place as a society. Then I'll tell you why we think this project should be open source, and why we want to connect with the open source community on it. Then I'm going to give you a brief history of sexual research to see where the PSI Grasm project fits into a larger picture. And finally, I want to go into the technical details of the devices and the sensors, tell you what kind of research directions we want to go in, and let you know how you can contribute to the project and how you can keep track of what we're doing. But uh, first, I want to get your attention, so I want to give you an update on what we've been up to in the last few months in a under two minutes with the video I made.